Hello everybody, GitHub just launched an updated version of their pair programming software called Copilot. The new software is called Copilot X. If you are a programmer or have been in the tech industry, you probably know all about GitHub already. This video is actually geared towards both people in tech and also people who don't have a programming background. I think both the way we learn programming and how programming is done in the real world will change drastically in the next few years. So make sure to stick around till the end of this video. So there's two things I'm going to do before telling you anything about Copilot X. The first thing is I'm going to tell you what pair programming is and also how programming works in the real world because I've been working in the industry for the last 10 years. All right, let's get started. So what is pair programming anyways? Say you're writing a new piece of software in a widely used programming language like Python, but you're not that familiar with Python or maybe you're new to the company and you want to learn how this thing is done correctly. There's two ways to do that. Number one is to try to figure out everything yourself or number two, do some pair programming with a senior engineer so they can watch while you code or guide you in the right direction. And when you get a little bit of time with a senior engineer, maybe 30 minutes, that usually puts you in the right direction so you can get your work done much faster. Now what AI pair programming has done till now, because GitHub already had a version of Copilot out already, is having an AI assistant to help you out with simple tasks. So what that was doing was saving some time from senior engineers so you can get your work done fast without needing a lot of time from human engineers. Now what just happened recently is that GitHub is actually integrating OpenAI's GPT-4 in its pair programming software. So the quality of this help will get much, much better. Let me show you how real world programming works with a small example. So recently I made this video on how you can write a simple piece of Python code using ChatGPT. But if you look at this piece of code as a new person, you probably don't know what this is for. So the first thing you need to do is to add some comments explaining what this code does. So this one is to add commas and remove trailing spaces at the end of words in a file. So I was letting this piece of code access this file called filename.txt and having some actions done on it. Now for the next step, I actually maybe want to put this in a class. So think of class as a template for doing some kind of action. And I want to put this inside a class so this can be instantiated by some other piece of code and they can use the functionality of this piece of code. Now I don't know how to write a class in Python. So I'm stuck here, right? I don't know how to write how to use a class in, in Python because maybe I'm new to Python. So that's another challenge I have. Now, if I try to execute this and I run across this error. So usually when errors show up like these, if you read the error, most of the time you'll know what's going on. But most people, they just copy this error and put that on Google. And I've done it many, many times. So if you just go on Google and you type this error, and now they just scan through Google to get all the responses, usually on this website called Stack Overflow, which has a lot of people putting their questions like these. And usually you go through hundreds of messages like this on Stack Overflow. Some of them are like four or five years old and you try to fix your current problem using some other person's comment, which may or may not apply to you. And this can get pretty time consuming and people still usually just try to find more and more new questions to fix their issue than trying to just read the comment and fixing it here. But that's not how a lot of people work. So programmers are actually pretty lazy, believe it or not. So this kind of is a godsend for programmers who are trying to build software really fast because this style of fixing your issues with solutions from things which are nine years old can get irritating and you don't know if a lot of these questions apply to you. You're trying to explain a context specific issue to this website which has responses from all over the world. So now that you know what a day to day of a professional programmer looks like and trust me a lot of time of real world programmers is spent on stack overflow and trying to fix random errors like these. People have spent entire days just trying to figure out that their code could have worked just with a semicolon. That kind of oversight will be fixed in an instant. Let's see if you can identify how GitHub's Copilot X can help you out.
So as you see, Copilot has a chat function similar to ChatGPT or Bing Chat, which allows you to just type an instruction and it will just do it for you without trying to consult senior engineers or Stack Overflow. So if you have a piece of code, and this is how you use classes in Python, by the way, you can just instruct GitHub Copilot to just add some tests for it. Unit tests mean code, which actually tests other code. So a unit test would be a piece of code, which would try out different variations of files and try out different things with it to make sure that the piece of code works in all situations. Usually developers are lazy doing it, so now you don't have to do it. You can just instruct GitHub Copilot to do it so you don't get blamed for not writing enough unit tests. By the way, if you go to my playlist called ChatGPT, you're going to see in some of my older videos, I have used ChatGPT to do similar things. In this video, I did some debugging on a broken piece of code. And in this one, I added some unit tests using ChatGPT for an existing functionality. Both of these now can be done using Copilot X because these are context aware. You don't need to exit your Visual Studio code or any compiler that you're using to write code all of the functionality will be inbuilt into it. So that is why this is a big deal. You can keep your focus on the screen and your piece of code and you don't have to hunt around Stack Overflow and different kinds of websites getting distracted by all kinds of things and you can focus on completing your task really fast. An additional thing to mention here is during programming interviews, a lot of times programmers get grilled on pretty complicated questions just to see if they are capable of writing that piece of code by hand. But I don't know how long that will last because GitHub Copilot can do those kinds of simple tasks even if they're complicated pretty fast. So why bother wasting a developer's time trying to figure out how to do something like vertically align a div, which is a front-end thing which can get complicated sometimes. I think going forward, developers will need to think a lot more architecturally than on low-level code. Like you're not going to be focused on getting a small piece of code to work properly because you missed a semicolon or you don't know how the syntax works. And I think they will spend more time figuring out how everything works together because I don't think AI can do that yet. I don't think AI can figure out multiple systems and get them to all work together. It is in its current state pretty good at getting small things done really fast. It's more like an accelerator. It's more like, as this name says, a co-pilot. So it's definitely not the main person doing the job. And they can use GitHub Copilot to help themselves out to get that all done much faster. So I think I got my point across on how important Copilot is. At the moment, it's accessible by a waitlist. So if you click join the waitlist right here, you can sign up for GitHub Copilot. Actually, GitHub is coming out with a bunch of different features. A lot of them have limited waitlists. So I recommend you to go to this link and sign up using your GitHub account. The current version of GitHub Copilot requires you to pay, I think, 10 or 15 bucks a month but they do have a two month trial period to try it out so if you click sign up on a free trial it's gonna first start you off with a 60 day free trial after that you pay monthly or yearly as you choose so I'm really excited to see how this changes programming in the real world so now grilling engineers on small programming tasks like how to figure out small functions would be kind of useless I think they should be asked more questions on systems and how different systems work so maybe they can use all these different kinds of working functions together to get some kind of software working. But that's all I have for today's video. I hope you got some value from it. If you did enjoy it, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more videos coming up. Till the next one, thank you so much.